independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Go ask any person anywhere across this country, walking down the street, walk up to him and say, hey, do you think on the census we should ask how many citizens are in the country or ask, are you a citizen? Every single person you will encounter will say, well, yeah, of course we should ask that. Yeah, I think it's fair, right? I know a lot of people are freaking out. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. That's not on there? I talk to people who are like, I thought that you, that's the whole point. You were interviewing people that were citizens. Now, it's about getting a gauge of how many, it's, this is mostly about bodies in the country. I think we have a right to know who's here. I think we absolutely have a right to know, all right, who is here? Who's here right now? How are you here? Are you a citizen? Are you a resident? Are you here illegally? I think it's a very fair question to ask. Today, the battle is going on in Washington as the 2020 census gets ready to go out. Of course, there's going to be lawsuits left, right, and center. And it matters because if you're counting bodies rather than citizens, then you potentially could lose seats that matter in some areas. And you could gain seats if you're allowed to keep just the amount of people that are here. We're going just on the people. Whether those people can vote or not, doesn't matter. Just on the amount of people. I have no problem with that. People are like, well, it's not very nice. It's not fair. Today, Trump said, yeah, you know what? No, we're uh, going to block this. We're going to use executive privilege. Although we have limited information about this scheme, we've been blocked from fully determining the real reason the administration sought to add the citizenship question. It should be on there, right? That's who should we, we we should be asking citizens, residents, Americans, people that are supposed to be, we should be asking you questions. You should be a part of this. What about the people that are not? You're not supposed to be here. In theory, you shouldn't be participating at all because in theory, you shouldn't be here. See the way that works? Right? See the way that works? You're not supposed to be here in theory. By bad laws and good graces, you're allowed to be here. I have no problem with it. Now, they'll come out and they'll say, look, I understand why the Democrats are pissed. I get it, right? This is a last-second thing. How dare you do this? But is it really a last-second thing? And and, and how long are you going to drag it on? Because the whole thought process is, is, is they've done nothing. The Republicans have given them nothing when it comes to the amount of paperwork that they're asking for and their subpoena, and they've done nothing. And the administration has produced. Yeah. How much, though? I want to hear this. And the administration has produced not 17,000, 31,000 pages 31. of documents, 14,000 from commerce, 17,000 from justice relating to this question, the citizenship question. Here's my question to you out there. It's our poll question today. Should the citizenship question be on the census? I say yes, right? These are these silly things where it's like, well, you're going to disenfranchise people. You're going to do it. It is so ridiculous. It's like when people tell me, well, voter ID is suppression. How is it suppression? Because people can't get an ID. Why can't you get an ID? It's because it's too far away. Or because there's always an excuse of why people can't do things. There's always some excuse. I think the citizen question should be there. I think it's absolutely right. We need to know. And the thing is, count the bodies, but count the citizenship, put the citizenship on there. Well, the whole thing is, is if if we're not going to get a fair account because people aren't going to answer. Well, there are people that are citizens that don't want to answer the questions either. It's not like it's an exact perfect science. We're not going to get to the T. By the time the census is finished and it's been counted, those numbers will have changed a ton. But I do think it's a fair question to ask. Absolutely. We should ask, why aren't we asking? Why aren't we? It has to be seen in a context. The context of an anti-immigrant 
policy coming out of this White House. And it's designed to intimidate and instill fear. And the question isn't the one my distinguished friend has posed to us. The question is, what are they afraid of that we'll discover with this subpoena? Is there some sort of anti-immigrant thing? Is there? Is there an anti? Well, yeah, because he doesn't like it, and he's trying to stop people from coming here illegally. You can't win in a situation like that. I think the question is a fair question. I don't think it's racist. And, and know that that is the thing to do. If you say, hey, we should have this or we should have that, the, the easiest thing to do is say you're a racist, you're a xenophobe, you're anti this, you're anti that, you're homophobic, you're Islamophobic. It's just easy. Rather than have a compelling argument, rather than say, okay, tell me why it's this, because it's not fair to people that aren't here legally. Well, they're not supposed to be here. Let's get a. Re- wouldn't you like to know for how many years? Wouldn't you like to know around about how many people are in this country illegally? Because for how many years? What have we heard? It's 12 million, 17 million, 22 million, 8 million, 6 million. That number, people just pull that number out because you can't quantify. You can't actually measure it. Is it going to be perfect? No. But I think. When you hear stuff like this and the argument of why, well, you know, it's it's because they're anti-immigrant. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. We have every right in this country. This is our home. We have every right to know who's here and who's not here. We're not going to throw you out. That sh- Look, that ship has sailed a long time ago. I think we can realize that. Right? So why not? What are, what are people afraid of? What if? What if it's 8 million? What if it's 32 million or 34 million? Does that change a narrative? It's possible. I don't see a problem with it. Others do. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from every single one of you. So CBS described this today, and I, th- I found it very interesting. Or uh, Quinnipiac uh, poll. There's like 58 polls that are out right now. And Trump, by the way, loses to every single person on the Democratic side, even Andrew Yang. A new national poll shows President Trump trailing each of six Democratic candidates in a potential head-to-head contest. The Democrats' lead ranges from five points for Cory Booker and Pete Buttigieg to 13 points for Joe Biden. The poll calls Biden's 53 to 40 advantage a landslide proportion. A landslide proportion. Now, let's all go back, though, two years Right. It was over. It was done. Five thirty eight, eight silver. Everybody. It was over. The path was easy. It was a coronation. Every single poll in the history of polls had said what? Hillary won. I mean, she didn't have to show up. Right. And she didn't in some places. And it cost her. It cost her. It's early. Do I think today, if Biden took on Trump, he wins? No. Do I think if Buttigieg took on Trump, he wins? No. Warren, no. No, no, no. Now, Trump, I still think the opportunity is there for a Democrat to rise and to take Trump on. And I think if the economy really slows down, I mean, Trump's approval rating is 40. Let's say at best it's 45%. That's going to be tough. He could be looking at the exact same thing, losing the popular but winning the Electoral College, which still means you win, but understand that it's a tough situation if you are... Donald Trump, because you're looking at these numbers and you're not thrilled. You're hearing internally from people who are saying that even his pollsters are saying it's ugly right now. But as we all know, when it comes to Trump, unlike other presidents and politicians, people tend to be a little bit more quiet and not give you a certain answer that you may think they're going to give you, even if they support Trump, just because there's a fear of judgment. We saw it in the last election. Where if a computer called, they got a better reading than if a pollster calls a person. 
I still think Trump has support out there that's quiet. And I still think there's a lot of independents that will hold their nose because they can't stand who he is as a person. But look at the economy and some of his policies and will show up. It's still a long way away, but if you're Trump, some of these numbers are disconcerting for sure. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Hey, I'd like you to, uh, uh, well, well, you know, I just, I, just, I just want you guys to feel old. It was the night of June 12th, 1994. Victim Nicole Brown Simpson. When O.J. Simpson's ex-wife and Ron Goldman were murdered. After the murders, O.J. Simpson had flown to Chicago. Within hours, the LAPD said it was questioning the Hall of Fame running back and that he was a potential witness. His attorney went in front of microphones. He had nothing to do with this tragedy. In the following days, Simpson would become a suspect and be charged. He had agreed to turn himself in, but instead took off on the infamous white Bronco chase. Yeah. I remember where I was, too. I was buying World Cup tickets. Well, we had World Cup tickets. We, we went to pick them up. So we had all these World Cup tickets to go pick up because the World Cup was here. When it was just getting ready to start, literally in the middle of June, like two or three days at, during the white Bronco chase, it was so crazy. And it was so surreal seeing the Bronco go by and seeing people getting out on the freeway, holding up signs like, go juice and stuff. And I'm just like, this is insane. This is insane. By the way, for those of you not keeping score, uh, still haven't found the killer. <laughs> just want to point that out. Still have not found the killer. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Lightstream. Summertime is here. You're looking around and you're saying to self, self, I made a promise to myself at the beginning of this year that I was going to get out of debt. You look around. You've got credit cards. You're paying way too much. 19% APR is the average credit card percentage rate. Think about that. That's what you're paying. 19%. Imagine if you were paying 5.95%. That's what you can get with a credit card consolidation loan with Lightstream. Loans from as little as 5.95% APR with auto pay, lower by about 13%. Just that's insane. No fees. You can even get your money as early as the same day. You got decent credit. You got some credit card out there you'd like to get rid of and consolidate it to one simple, easy loan. This is what Lightstream's all about. And my listeners, that's you guys. You can even get a special interest rate discount. Now, the way to get this is to go to Lightstream.com slash Benson. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash Benson. Subject to credit approval. Rate includes 0.50% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply. Offer is subject to change without notice. Visit Lightstream.com slash Benson. For more information, it's the Chad Benson Show. Let the Washington Beltway strangle you. This is where the exhausted majority comes to refuel, realign, and reevaluate. This is Chad Benson. Mr. Speaker, it is tiring to hear from so many sex starved males on this floor talk about a woman's right to choose. Mr. Speaker. For what purpose does the gentleman from Georgia recognize, uh, seek recognition? The, uh, Mr. Speaker, I would just like to ask my friend if she'd like to, to change her last, uh, her last statement. Mr. Speaker, if it pleases my colleague on the other side, I will withdraw my statement about sex-starved males on the floor. Ah, there's no partisan in politics, is there? That's Norma Torres. Here's a shocker. Democrat, California. I know. Ha, goodness me. Uh, sex starved men. Look at you sex. Well, maybe if you give it up a little bit, we wouldn't be this way. <laughs> These are the debates that are happening at state level in our capitals, at the capital level. These are some of the debates that are happening. Doesn't it make you go, wait, What? I just want to give you the chance to say, yeah, I probably shouldn't have said that. Like, we're giving you the opportunity to walk that one back. Norma. Norma! She did. She walked it back. If it makes you happy, I'll walk it back. If it makes you happy, I will recall what I said. If it does. 
How do you know I'm sex star? Wow. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson. Shoo is your Twitter. So uh, we're still trying to piece it together. It is an interesting thing. It happened over the weekend. Uh, Big Poppy, right? Baseball player. Baseball has been very, very good to me. I love Big Poppy. Guys always played with a smile, always played hard, and he had a baseball player's physique. It's the reason they call him Big Poppy. Right? Built like a tank. Great player. Hall of Famer. First ballot. Got shot over the weekend in the Dominican. Now they've arrested six people in connection to his attempted assassination. Hearing all kinds of different things, but these guys were paid about $8,000 or 400000 whatever it is over there, to assassinate him. And boy, if you're going to be an assassin, nothing says shoot somebody and don't catch us like doing it in the middle of a club. <laughs> was not we did not hire the best people. That was that was my bad. Dude, your cousin's kind of stupid. <laughs> Hearing all kinds of things about this though. One of the things is he was maybe having an affair with a powerful person. Who knows what, but they said they were paid 7800 bucks to kill him. I was telling producer Phil and Anthony, if you see the video, there's a video, like a TV camera of him getting beat up, like not a like a, not a handheld video, but the people that are beating him up are also live streeting the fact that they're beating him up, because that is the world that we live in. Now. With this phone, with this computer in your hand, you are actor, director, writer, photographer, cinematographer, reporter, all in one. Paid him. 7800 bucks. To split how many ways? Did the guy who shoot, did he get more? Do you only get a portion of it? How does this work? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It's the Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. There was one Republican that voted for it, but uh, it's more of a my partisan approach. You know, it's it's basically a partisan attack uh, on the president and everybody else. Mark Meadows, right there, not Carolina Republican census battle that's going on, and I'm of the opinion. This is just me, right? Maybe you have a different opinion, and we could talk about that. Right. There was once on well, 1950, I think it was the last time, where they asked you, are you a citizen? And then it changed to what country you were born in. It is a joke. We should know who's here, right? You should know who's in your house, whether they're invited or not invited. Doesn't mean you're getting kicked out, because as we know, that ain't going to happen, right? That isn't going to happen for a myriad of reasons. It's just not going to happen. But shouldn't you have the right to know? And when I hear people say, well, it's xenophobic and it's all, I, yeah, I just, I don't buy into that. I, I'm over that. Let's be real and honest. Right? And he just, you know, you listen to him there and he, and he talks about, you know, the partisanship. The great article yesterday in the New York Times, right? I know, really weird. But talks about how we have become such a partisan country that even broken up into our states, it's tribal now. 49 of the 50 states are one-party rule. Only Minnesota eh, is split. Think about that. 49, 49, 49, 49, 49 is one party. And some of those... Texas, California, some are super majorities, meaning the other side, like California, like the last Republican, you can turn the light off now <laughs> as you leave, right? That you've got no hope. 
When I grew up in California, my, you know, I, I knew it was a left-leaning state, right? And we had a little bit of a balance. We had enough people on the right side of the aisle that could temper the left side. It's not like that anymore. Now we are hyper-partisan. We're moving away. The coastal sides, the upper eastern seaboard, if you will, and the left coast, all blue. Center of the country in the south, all red. We're so tribal. And, 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 I, and I've said that this is the culture war that's going on. And as we move into the future, it's going to become more and more so. People are going to be deciding where they live, not only based on is it good for business, is it affordable, it's going to be based on do they have my values, do they have my political beliefs. That right there is something that's going to be coming more and more in the future. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter You could tweet out at us. I just think this is hilarious. This is a baseball game last night. (laughs) And they were talking about home runs, right? Why the bat doesn't break up like it used to. You know, Sammy Sosa and all those, you know, years ago. You know, it just seemed like every time a guy would take a swing, the bat would just, it would shatter in the whole nine yards. But they were talking about why home runs are leaving the yard at a high rate of speed. Every once in a while, one will be on the ground past the pitcher. But not the violent helicopter spear thing that we saw for a couple of years anymore. And I think the bats plus the balls plus launch angles plus pitchers throwing hard plus global warming is why there's so many home runs. I didn't, Producer Phil, did you know global warming is good at baseball? I did not know this. Well, I did not know this. Global warming is good at baseball. There's a reason why the ball leaves the yard. The way it does now. First of all, we all know this. Chicks dig the long ball. Oh, Chad, I shouldn't have said that. Secondly, vitally important, guys are bigger, stronger, faster. And that includes pitchers. And no longer is it put the ball in play. I could take a single or double. It's let's hit it out of the park. It's just it's what it's about. It's what it's about, right? Global warming. And the baseball. Oh, is the baseball different? Is it different? Is it wound tighter? Is it made of something? Is there like a Super Bowl in it when you were kidding at the Super Bowl? Boing, boing, that thing would bounce everywhere. Oh, yeah, I remember that. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show. Is your Twitter, you could tweet at us, the U.S. Women's National Team crushed Thailand yesterday. A lot of people got on me about this. I will say this. I watched France, the host nation today, play Norway, one of the better teams in the world. 20 years ago, it was Norway and America were the two best teams uh, on the planet. Uh, now there's there's five or six teams that have a chance of winning this World Cup. W- one of us, uh, one of them being us, obviously. Uh, Norway really surprised. France is is bookies' favorites because they're the second or third best team on paper, if you will. But they're also at home, and that's usually worth something when you host a big tournament like this. But yesterday we put 13 uh, goals by. I was not happy by the way that we celebrated those goals, right? I heard Derek Ray, who was, uh, who was a big-time announcer, say, look, I've never scored a goal in the World Cup. I'm sure if my family's there, I'd be excited. It was, I just thought it was overkill. We could have took the, the, you know, our foot off the pedal a while ago. Alex Morgan scored five, and she discussed uh, today you know, kind of the backlash that globally is happening against the Americans, which happens in all sports, by the way. A lot of jealousy out there when it comes to sports in America. What do you say to the critics about the score line and what they're saying about how the U.S. team celebrated? I mean, I think it's disrespectful if we don't uh, show up and, and give our best and play our game for 90 minutes. It's disrespectful to um, the Thai team, and I believe they wanted us to play um, play them straight up. Yeah, you don't want to embarrass a team by not trying, but there are ways of going about it. Where it doesn't look like that. There is. There's ways. I've been on both sides of this. I have. When we were younger, I was telling a story. When we were younger, uh, this team called the San Pedro Blue Jacks would thump us. Now, we were way too good for our age bracket. Like, way too good for our age bracket. So we were, I think, the under 14 or 15 state champs, and we played nationals every year, and we were in the top three or four teams. So it was no fun. So we moved up to under 18. 
And the Blue Jackets would thump us all the time. Eight nothing, ten nothing, right? You know, and we were putting effort that we didn't want them to to placate us, but we also knew that they stopped celebrating after the third or fourth goal because they knew they were going to win. They were much older than we were, and I've been on the other side where you don't celebrate, right? You 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 can delay the game a little bit. You can do those kind of things, and it didn't seem like that. And they'll say, "Well, the goal differential," because you're going to hear all this crap. And I see all this. Let me tell you about goal differential. They're worried about Sweden. You play Sweden. Take care of your business, and it doesn't matter about goal differential. You play them head-to-head, take care of them, and it doesn't matter. You're a better team than them. Beat them on the field. Guess what? You you go through as the champions of your division. You don't have to worry about the goal differential. And for the celebrations, these are goals that we have dreamt of our entire life. I mean, I'm going to celebrate Mal Pugh's goal. I'm going to celebrate Sam Ewis and Roosevelt. This is our first World Cup, and I'm so proud of them. And so, every single, and I couldn't have dreamt of scoring five goals in a World Cup. Um, so it's, you know, it's incredible for us all. And um, I'm happy just ignoring those comments. <laughs> yeah, and and that's fair. That's fair. I just think as as the coach, I would have said, hey guys, hey gals. Let's back it off a little bit, right? We're up six, we're up eight, we're up ten. You guys don't need to be celebrating like this. And here's the other side of the thing, right? And, and I'm going to say this, right? In a man's game, it doesn't happen like that. Not that there's not ass whoopings, right? But you know what? I watched Ger- Germany yesterday. I saw the highlights of Germany played, uh, God, Gibraltar, right? Who was never going to make it to any major championship. Uh, and they got, they got thumped. There was eight nothing Germany. They stopped celebrating after second or third. Spain earlier this week played the Faroe Islands. They didn't even, you know, they, it looked like a practice game, right? They weren't celebrating, minus a little high five. Here's what doesn't happen. When you celebrate like that yesterday in front of us doing the things you're doing, the next time you get the ball, your head better be on a swivel because I'm going to lay out. You're going to feel it. You may miss the, I'll miss the next game for sure. You may miss the next game too. <laughs> And it has nothing to do with you getting a red card. Ooh. See hockey? See what happens in hockey when you, when you get up and things happen? What happens? You know why it doesn't happen like it used to? Because guys will drop gloves. And that sounds stupid, but the reality is is that, that yesterday, the celebrating the way they did, I thought was ridiculous. The rest of it, you put you beat who's in front of it. I blame FIFA for having you know, a poor team out there. And by the way, Supposedly, Thailand's ranked 34th. We play Chile Sunday. They're ranked 39th. How excited do you think Chile is? Probably not very excited, Chad. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. All right. As a kid growing up, my mother told me lots of things. In retrospect, were absolute lies. Now, the food industry is playing that same game. The commercials make it sound like lying to your kids is fun. The internet lady turns off the internet at 6 p.m. But has it really come to this? Introducing craft salad frosting. Yes, yes it has. Ingredients, craft ranch dressing and deception. Is it frosting? No. Is it wrong? It's not important. But it will get your kids to eat their salad and veggies. Good luck with that. We want to be there when your daughter takes her first bite of salad frosting and never eats a vegetable again. Kids, look. Frosting for salad. All right. <laughs> and I was thinking today, okay, what, what are the things that your mother used to say? Is it, right? What are the warnings? Don't swim right after you've eaten. Right? Don't do that. You better not swim after you eat 30 minutes. And you're growing up, you're like, dude, after you were only 18 minutes. Right? 18 minutes. You you just, oh. Like, don't sit too close to the TV. You're going to go blind. Right? And, and, they, and, and they had all of these things that they would tell you. And looking back, you're like, this is such a lie. This is such a lie. And it was the same thing with vegetables. And how many of you heard this, which was in many ways true, but it really had no relevance in your life. There are starving kids in Africa, <laughs> which is probably was true at the time. But what does that have to do with my lima bean? You send it to him or her. See if they like it. But it was just one of those things that it was that they would tell you these lies over and over again. And you sat back and you're like, oh, you're looking back. The, the whole 30 minutes after swimming. Never got. <laughs> 
Never got three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Love hearing from you. We got a, a poll question up today about the census. Should we have the citizen question on the census? I believe that we should. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. What do you think? Right now, seventy six percent of you say yes, and I've even had several Democrats say I don't have a problem with it. So what say you? You can text the program, 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Getting a good night's sleep, which I will tonight because I have my my pillow. My my pillow. I love it. 24 months or so, like two plus years I've had my my pillow. I've had it for a while. I sleep amazing. And, and I sleep sound. And to me, that's the most important thing. You can be in bed for 10 hours, and if you're struggling and you're tossing, you're turning, it doesn't matter. You can be in bed for six hours. And if you sleep great, there you go. It is so amazing to be able to sleep this well. Now, they're doing stuff for my listeners. It's amazing, right? And it's no risk to you, by the way. You're going to get two premium my pillows for less than 70 bucks that's 34.99 per pillow the lowest price ever offered to my listeners you got to go to mypillow.com use promo code benson and there's a 60 day money back guarantee boom 100% machine washable and dryable cotton made in the USA 10 year warranty and you have a 60 day money back guarantee two premium my pillows 69.98 promo code is benson go to mypillow.com MyPillow.com, promo code Benson, or call 800-983-4975. And make sure you give them the promo code Benson. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. No fake outrage here. Just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. Ah. You're texting in about the census. Democrat, Chad, I don't see a problem with the census. No, I don't think I don't see a problem with the census either. I don't know. I, it's so partisan. Like, does it matter? Like, is it really that bad to ask the question? But and people say, well, why is it important? I'm going to tell you guys this: why the census is important. This is how you get money federally. The more people you have, the more bodies. Doesn't matter if they're citizens, residents, or 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 non citizens who've who've accidentally crossed the border. It doesn't matter any of that. You get it based on bodies. So the more people you have, the more federal funds you're going to get, and also your representatives. The more people you have, the more representatives you have in Washington. So that's why it's important. So if you have 35 million people in California, I'm throwing around about. I know what they have in California. 38, 40, who knows. But 5 million, let's just say, or 3 million are, are, are not citizens, and they want us to count as citizens, the number of citizens, that may affect the amount of money California's going to get federally, and it may affect the amount of seats they have. So, yeah, I can see why it's important. I see why the left pushes back. And AOC, you know, she was up in arms about it today. Uh, you know, we should be able to study this question. It takes five years. Why did they rush it in on the back end? Well, I'm going to tell you guys right now, this was something that was already on there. And then they took it off. So it's not like this. And it's not like, what are you going to study? Are you an American citizen? If so, where were you born? So maybe you're naturalized. It's crazy. It's like we can't even have. That's why we can't have nice things. This right here. One of the reasons we cannot have nice things. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show. Is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. I'm super excited. I will be watching the hockey tonight, A, for sure. It is Game 7, which is the most exciting thing in sports, is Game 7 of hockey. It's funny that I'm talking like that because it's St. Louis versus Boston, but most of the guys playing are Canadian. Nerves are nerves. Everybody's got nerves, and like I said before, it's it's okay to be nervous. It means you care and, and you want to be successful and do well. Um, once you get on the ice and you, you have a shift or two, the nerves are going away, and it's just playing hockey then. And, you know, the team that executes the best and, and does their job is probably going to win the game. Yeah, this is it. You lay it out there, too. If you've never seen a Game 7 of any sport, like, it's awesome. And if you've never seen a playoff hockey game, you multiply that awesomeness, like, by a trillion. It is, it is incredible.
They lay everything out there. In fact, Zan Ochara, who is the star of Boston, right? He's the star of the Boston Bruins. He's been their captain for years. He's been he's been there. He's like six foot nine, so he's like seven one on skates. He has a not just a broken jaw, a destroyed jaw. And they he wanted to come on the ice the other night after he broke it. And they wouldn't let him. But he didn't miss a game. They do not. They don't care. You know, they'll get it fixed. We'll get it fixed later on. It'll be fun to watch. The sad thing is, is hockey's a tough thing to watch on television, right? Doesn't get the the love that maybe it should get. But you watch it, it is incredible. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. What do you think of the citizenship question on the census? Should it be there? Should it not be there? Text the program. You can tweet at me, at Chad Benson Show. The text line is 323 323- 538 Chad 323 538 Chad it's the Chad Benson show This is the Chad Benson show Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Now, when we talk about oligarchy, let us be clear. By the way, I just want to explain oligarchy, for those of you who don't know, form of a power structure, right? Lots of power, limited amount of people that have that power. So small group, lots of power, right? That's an oligarchy. Just for those of you... Maybe didn't know what it was, or you're like, wait, what was this again? No, I just want to give you guys that. So we know what we're talking about going forward. Now, when we talk about oligarchy, let us be clear about what we mean. Right now, in the United States of America, three families control more wealth than the bottom half of our country, some 160 and six million Americans. The top 1% own more wealth than the bottom 92%. And 49% of all new income generated today goes to the top 1%. In fact, income and wealth inequality today is greater in the United States than in any time since the 1920s. So Bernie did a big thing today because he is uh, he's slipping. The reality is the polls are showing that Bernie's fight is real. His lane that once he was the only occupant of is now got a traffic jam. It's got his own helicopter. Hey, what's the lane out there over here on the Bernie uh, sideways? There's going to be a little bit of traffic over here. So that's what's going on in Bernie's lane, right? And the socialism thing that's out there, but we debate it all day. The reality is it's not coming here anytime soon. We've got some social programs already, but the way that I think Bernie wants to do it isn't coming here anytime soon. And the reason is simply this. Let's say Bernie becomes president. What's he going to implement? Nothing gets done now. Hell, when both sides, when they each have everything they want, they don't get anything done. It's not going to happen. States will play a bigger part in the socialism side of stuff than the federal government will, which is good. And Bernie... You know, we was talking to producer Anthony. He said, you know, only time I've ever heard him really talk about how he goes and implements this thing, because that's the question I rarely hear. It's the same thing. The really, really rich have this. The really, really poor don't have this. These people over here need this. We're going to give you this. This is what you deserve. We, we hear the same thing. It's like a comic, right? And 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 as a, comics, if you see a comic your favorite comic, every single night, by the fourth or fifth night, you'll know every joke, every punchline, every because they're going to repeat themselves. They're on tour, just like a band, right? It's like you go see a band play. It's not like the next night they come out and they play all songs you've never heard, right? So it's the same thing. You know, Pete Buttigieg started out great, but now it's, you know, we, we just see him in, you know, just little bits and pieces here. But Bernie, like... 
what are you going to do? And he, I guess he said to Rachel Maddow, well, the only way any of this stuff gets done is once I get elected, then we have to go out and we have to demand all of these things. We have to take to the streets. We have to protest. And then you got to get everybody that believes the same thing you do in politics to get elected and take seats away from the other side. It's virtually impossible. It is. You know what I'd love to see? An honest politician. For all Trump's faults, and he lies about this, that, and the other, you know what at least he does? Is he, he's a straight shooter, right? We could talk about behind the scenes. Like Everybody acts like Trump's the only one who's ever pulled executive privilege or this, that, and the other. Like, nobody. Come on. I don't like the attitude he has, but at least he throws stuff out there. I would just like to see somebody that would come on stage and say, look, here's the deal. We're kind of in this thing together. Right. You may not like your neighbor because he doesn't like so and so or she doesn't like this, that and the other. We're in this together. we got to figure out how we're going to work this thing out and work this thing through. Not going to get everything you want. I'm here to tell you that right now. Some of these jobs that are lost, they ain't coming back. So we got to figure out how to get you into a better position. We may have to raise some taxes in certain areas. we got to figure out how we go about getting rid of programs that don't work and how we implement things that do work. Nothing is free. If there's a better way to do something, we'll do it. And if the best way of doing something is doing the way we're doing it now, we'll keep doing it. But we don't get that, right? It's it's sad. We don't get anybody who's honest. Like Joe Biden's like, hey, if you elect me president, I'll cure cancer. What? So you've got one side of the aisle. Who's promising to give you free money, free jobs, right? Free money, free jobs, free health care, free homes, and now cure cancer. What? (laughs) That's insane. Where's the rational human being that comes on and says, "Mm, I'm not going to make your life a thousand times better. That's up to you, right? That's up to you. I want to give you opportunities. I want to make sure that you have those opportunities. And some of you out there, that that hill you're going to climb is a little bit higher than somebody else. That's Life's not fair. But I want to make sure you at least have the opportunity. I will not guarantee your outcome, but I want to guarantee you the opportunity. Everything else is up to you. And we'll do what we can to help. But we're not going to hold your hand forever. We're not going to get any of that. Free money, free jobs, free housing, free health care, cure cancer. Yeah, he said it. (laughs) This is insane. It is. Oh, my God. Could you, every time I hear some of this stuff, I just think back to, like an episode of the Brady Bunch where one of them was running for like class president and they're like, and people like promising like popsicles and stuff like it's, it's, it's just not real. And I wish somebody would, would give you the truth. And I, I remember, you know, John McCain, God bless his soul. uh, When he was running for president, he was in Ohio and he was at a factory and it had closed down and somebody that used to work at the factory, you know, is doing one of the events as he's running, says, when are you going to bring jobs back to this town? And he looked at him, he says, they're not coming back. That's the truth. They're not coming back. And he got destroyed for that. He told the truth. Cure cancer. Jeez. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show. Is your Twitter? You can tweet at us. The uh, census, the battle of the census is going on right now. Should we, shouldn't we, should we, shouldn't we, should there be a question? Should there not be a question about citizenship? Elijah Cummings. 200 to 300 years from now, people will look back on this moment. And they won't ask the question, what did you do? What did you do when there was an effort to undercount your neighbors? (laughs) Really? That's going to happen? Undercount your neighbors. It's not about undercounting your neighbors, right? First of all, you don't have to answer. If you're not from this country, if you're just a right, you don't have to answer. It's not, no, no. And it's not going to be perfect, right? The census. It's not going to be perfect. I think we all realize that. It's not about undercounting your neighbors. 
But shouldn't we know who's here? Don't we have a right to know? Wouldn't you like to know what the real number is ish? Because it's all going to be an ish. What if, I keep saying, what if it's 8 million? What if it's 35 million people that are here illegally? Not that we're going to get the real number because people are going to decline to answer and all of these kind of things. But I think we do have a right. It's not about not counting you. You're next to me. I can see you. You're not an apparition. But if you choose not to answer it, that's on you. It's, it's, it's ridiculous that we have these kind of conversations when common sense says, yeah, you know, we should have the citizen question on it. We had it in the 50s. Illegal immigration has become a problem. Some states are using it to their advantage to get more federal funds, to get more representation in Washington. Maybe, just maybe, we actually take a real look so we can have an understanding. We should have a head count. How many people actually bought tickets on this airplane? How many people are stowaways? And how many people are are, are standby, but you got on? I think it's fair. It's fair to ask the question. We don't want to do that. That's rude. It's just so stupid. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at us. So... Very interesting debate is going on right now and 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 something that I think we need to take a a real look at in Hong Kong. We're going to talk about that, what's happening in Hong Kong and why it does matter. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Got a text question up uh, and a poll question How do you feel about that there citizenship question? Should it be on the census or should it not be on the census? Is it racist? Is it rude? I want to hear from you. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It is the Chad Benson Show. You go, boy. This isn't about right or left. This is just about right and wrong. Right you are, Chad. The Chad Benson Show. A lot of the people I've spoken to say, look, they're not listening to us. It was quite clear on Sunday when they made their first announcement in response to the protests that they had no intention of listening to what people here say. They believe that the legislature here is going to pass this law, chiefly because the government has a majority and they will push it through. But they feel very passionately about making their voices heard. They want international media to see that they are against this. Yes, against what? Well, there's huge protests. There's a million people in the streets in Hong Kong over the weekend. Some 250,000 yesterday. It is getting ugly over there. 1997, July 1st, 1997, Hong Kong after 156 years of British rule, changed hands to the Chinese. China's whole thing was, we're going to leave our hands off it, we're going to let it be its own autonomous thing, but it'll be part of us, like a special territory. Since then, by the way, you can look at the correlation between the rise of China's power globally and also them taking over Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a financial hub. Hong Kong, Singapore, this area is a financial hub and is a huge deal for China. Slowly but surely, over the last couple of years, China's started to really do stuff. Now, if you want to run for office there, you have to be approved by the mainland. Right? So there goes some of the freedoms. Only specially picked communist leaders are getting the opportunity to run. And this law that they're fighting about right now is, if you commit a crime... In Hong Kong, you're to be extradited and tried in China. It's ugly. It is. And this, this let me tell you why this is an important thing. China is fighting the trade war right now with us. And despite what a lot of people want to make it out to be, uh, the reality is, is they're paying a price. They're hurting right now. They are. And President Xi knows it understands it, and this right here isn't a good look. And you need Hong Kong. And you're not going to lose Hong Kong, 
But do you do something ridiculous? If you go and look at the, what's happening there, this isn't like Tian- Tiananmen Square. There are cameras. They have a lot more freedoms than the mainland. They have because the whole thing was, could you imagine if tomorrow you became a communist, you, you, you became ruled by communist? I'm not talking about you, California. But you, you became ruled by communist. Even, and they said they were, what, what, oh, we're not going to do anything. We'll let you be you. But slowly but surely, they've turned the water up on that frog, and it's boiling a little bit more and more, and they're changing the rules as they go. It could get ugly fast. And the world is watching. It's not like Tiananmen Square. They can't grab your cameras. That ain't going to happen. And if they do something bad, what does the world do? I think that's a very important thing. What's the world going to do if... They decide, hey, we're going to just take these people out. Hey, we're going to go after these people. I think it's a very interesting thing because they need Hong Kong big time because it is such a financial hub, because they do trade and they do do so much globally. What does that look like? A million people in the streets is a lot of people. When you've got not that many people, Comparatively. That's huge. Could you imagine if we had 40, 50 million people marching in the streets? People are like, whoa. But this could be big. This could be. And you see what China's trying to do. Slowly but surely, they're exerting their power. What will it become? Will it become a situation where they quail and they say, nah, we're going to quail. We're not going to do anything. Quail the noise. It's just... Or is it going to get ugly? Are there going to be people killed in the streets? Is it going to turn into something that's going to make everybody stand up and go, China, you know what? Mm-mm. Can't do it. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. So this is interesting. We'll get more into it tomorrow, but I want to touch on this a little bit. The Global Peace Index is out. So the Global Peace Index this is the 13th edition of the Global Peace Index. It looks at, it's basically a snapshot of global peace. All right? Where peace is. And, oh my goodness. So, get ready for this, kids. All right? I just want everybody to understand this. This is how insane some of this stuff is. 163 nations are ranked. 163. 100, that's a, it's pretty good, right? Now you got the usuals, right? You know, the usuals. You got Iceland and New Zealand and Portugal, Austria, Denmark, Canada, Singapore, Slovenia, Japan, and Czech Republic. Those are the top 10 peaceful places. Australia's 13th, Germany 22nd, Britain 45th, France 60th. We're 128th. In fact, when it comes to global peace, we're behind the likes of El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. 113th, 14th, and 23, respectively. Mexico came in behind us. Now, they base this on all kinds of stuff. Uh, rates of homicides, incarcerations, presence of small arms, military expenditures, ongoing conflicts, terrorism, economic impact of violence, and even climate change. I'm like, well, if it's so bad here compared to Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. I'm just curious as to why we're not running there. Mm. Just throwing it out there. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Afghanistan, by the way, is the least peaceful nation. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Clip ball back in. Laval goes for goal and gets it. 
it's smashed in from close range. And it might fall here to Rapino. It's nine. It's ten. Is it going to be 13? It is. An emphatic victory for the USA. They win by 13 goals to nil. Yeah, 13 nothing yesterday, Women's World Cup game. And this this yesterday I tweeted out that this was a poor look. If you're wanting to get a sport out there and you want it to gain in popularity, and your showcase stage is the World Cup. For women, it is the World Cup, right? Just like women's ice hockey, it is the Olympics. For women, it's the World Cup. The gap in a lot, especially in team sports for women, the gap is tremendous. It is. You've got about eight teams that are that are that are decent and and and, and good, right? You've got about four teams that are that are that are great, and then it's you know it's after that the drop off is. We won thirteen nothing yesterday, thirteen nothing. In soccer, is say a hundred, hundred nothing in the NFL. Yeah, could you imagine that? Could you imagine that? Right, it's awful. I don't blame the women, as far as you know. They talk about goal differential and stuff like that, and you'll hear a lot of that of you know next couple of days and. I blame the women for the way they celebrated because you're 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 taking on a Thai team that is that shouldn't be there. And by the way, they're ranked 34th in the world. They're ranked 34th in the world. The team they play on Sundays ranked 39th. Chile, the U.S. Could it be ugly again? Well, it's about goal differential because of Sweden. You got to play Sweden, so you got to beat them. That's that. They're, they're, they're in, therein lies the magic of all. Win that game and none of this stuff matters. But it was the way that they celebrated yesterday that has the world pissed off. And I get it. Act like you've been there. And people started shooting me text messages about what a jerk I am and I'm sexist and this, that, and that. Look, I've made it abundantly clear that the women's game is not the men's game. Right? It's just not. Doesn't mean it's not worth watching. But on your biggest stage... That was an embarrassment yesterday. You've got girls that are crying. You've got women who've won World Cups for the U.S. celebrating as if they just scored the winning goal to win the World Cup against a bunch of people that were were, were trying their asses off but were so overmatched. To show you how overmatched it is, we could have played without a goalie and we would have won by 13 to nothing. And it could have been 20. That is not a good showcase. And they were getting hammered by everybody from the ladies on TSN, which is the Canadian ESPN. United States did exactly what we thought they would do in their opener. They blew away Thailand. But it was the way in which they did it which is now sparking headlines. And Claire, I loved what you said. If you were going to blow away a team, do it with humility. And they did not. Yeah, they didn't. You didn't need to celebrate. In my day, you celebrating your ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th goal like you were, the next time you got the ball, I'm going to come through uh, the back of your ankles. Yeah, celebrate that. Oh, that's not very nice. No, it's the reality of it. They were celebrating as if they, and, and everybody's like, they're bullies. No, they did. They, yeah, look, it's FIFA, the people who run soccer. It's their problem. They put they put teams in here that shouldn't be in here. They allowed them to qualify, and we should have another qualifier where, essentially, you've got to reach a certain standard because there's going to be more of these games, right? There's going to be more of these games, and there are teams out there that are very competitive. The U.S. is not going to walk through this thing. You've got several teams in this could easily win it. France is the favorite. They're they're like the second or third ranked team. Sweden's really good. We're going to play them. You know, Norway, that you've got some teams out there that are really good. But on your showcase, this should not happen. I don't think they were bullies. You 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 play who's in front of you. I think at some point in time yesterday, you could have took your foot off the pedal. And then people started writing me, right? You know, what a jerk I am, a horrible person, blah, 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 blah. Well, what about when Brazil played in the World Cup and they lost 7-1 to to Germany? Yeah, they did. But we're not going to compare. Well, are we really going to compare Thailand 
to 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 Brazil, five time world champions men who on their home field got eviscerated. And by the way, Germany that day could have probably scored ten or twelve and they took their foot off the pedal. I don't think the American women were bullies, but I think the way that they handled themselves after their twenty eight thousandth goal was a little was a little much. That was a little classless. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Do love hearing from every single one of you. All right, men. How are you doing in the department of pops? Being a dad. Over half of American fathers say they've been told at least once they need some work in the parenting department. Researchers at the University of Michigan talked to more than 700 dads with kids ranging in age from infant to 13. 52% say they've been told that they should spend more time with their kids, that they're being too rough with them or they aren't paying close enough attention. Grandparents were behind about a quarter of the complaints, but most often the one doing the criticizing, it's mom. As for the dads, 90% say they're doing just fine. They give us a D, we get ourselves today. You're being too rough. That is so stupid. It's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to have fun. You're supposed to do those kind of things, right? I mean, that's just it. Like, So Jack is and I are going to be together for the next uh, 10 days or so. I'm going to go hang out with him this weekend. He's going to be coming into work with me. Uh, and we're, we're going to do all kinds of stuff. And, yeah, roughhousing is going to be part of it. That is part of what you do with little boys. Little girls are a little bit different. But even then, it's good. But criticism is everywhere, isn't it? In this day and age, just being dad and showing up for a lot of people is enough. I'm amazed. Look, guys, we, we have fallen behind in the last 25 years when it comes to being parents. And in many ways, it's as much our fault, but it's also the fact that men, as parenting, we've become devalued. We've become not needed. You can't even say it anymore. Well, you know, it's, it's good to have both parents. You can't say that. You can't say that anymore because for for whatever reason, having a father involved, right, having a pops involved as well somehow demeans the woman and makes her less, which you and I both know is a bunch of crap. We both know it's a bunch of crap, but that's the way it's played out in a lot of ways, and it's silly. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter you could tweet at us. Love hearing from every single one of you. This was very interesting. So David Letterman is on a podcast talking about Trump. And I saw him the other day. He's got a new show out that is very interesting. He interviews uh, a bunch of people. He's interviewed Kanye. I saw him with uh, uh, the likes of uh, Ellen DeGeneres. I thought it was a really interesting interview. And it's great because they did this interview with Ellen. And he does it in front of an audience. And then he does stuff like at her like where she shoots her her show and it was really funny because uh you know so you if you've never people don't realize when you go to hollywood you go to like the universal studios that's where they shoot a lot of real stuff and that's where a lot of production companies are so they're walking you know back there and they're sh- you know you can see people are running around busy and she goes oh let's go next door she goes i, I see clint eastwood's car and it's literally like 15 20 feet so they go and see clint he's there he's like hey what's going on and stuff and 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 Dave is a very interesting character, right? The last ten years, you could see Dave was 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 letting more and more of his beliefs out there, and and taking more and more shots. And and he he'd left the Johnny Carson uh, model behind, even though he lived and loved Johnny. As far as don't show too much of your political beliefs, make sure everybody is 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 on target. So this podcast is very interesting. Not so much. And he said some stuff the other day, even when we was talking about Kanye, that I found interesting is he didn't, like a lot of people, insult Trump supporters. He didn't. He insults Trump, and that's fine. He doesn't go after his supporters like a lot of other people do. But this podcast was very interesting talking about Trump. And the same was true with Donald Trump. He could take a punch, and and I would uh, talk about him evicting elderly widows and being a slumlord and making fun of his hair. And he, I think he just liked being on TV. Had no sense that he was the uh, soulless bastard that he's turned into. <laughs> because then he would laugh at himself and gave, to me as a, a talk show guest, just seemed like fodder. Right. Br- bring him in. Let's go. Let's mow him down. Yeah, because he he was, right? He was. He laughed all the time. He didn't care. 
right? He he enjoyed being in the spotlight. I mean, all you do is read the back pages of all the New York tabloids. He lived for that kind of stuff, and he didn't care because he thought, you know, if you're making fun of you, are talking about me, I'm here. That's 99% better than everybody else. The harder you hit him, the harder he laughed. It's weird because these days, I certainly in, in the whole administration, I don't think I've seen him laugh once. And that's a troublesome sign I, I, about any person. Uh, that's right. I mean, everybody says, oh, wouldn't you like to talk to Donald Trump? And I would. And I would just like to say, Don, <laughs> it's Dave. Remember me? <laughs> I want to talk to the real Donald Trump. Right. right. Because I, I don't know now, don't know which is the real Donald Trump. Well, I think that changes, too. I think you become president and a lot of stuff changes. Right. And it's hard to laugh when half the world hates you. The other half of the world, uh, you know, 20 percent of them will tolerate you. And the other 30 percent look at you in a cult like manner. But when you hear nothing but negativity, it, yeah, you're, you know what? It shrinks. Your 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 support system shrinks. Who do you trust and not trust anymore? So I get that. But this is what he had to say about him. Joy Behar has been to three of his weddings, <laughs> <laughs> and and she she says I don't get it either. It's, right. it's he used to be like the kind of the the boob of New York More that amiable. pretended to be wealthy right. or we thought was wealthy, right? And now he's just um, he's he's a psychotic. Yes, <laughs> is well, that is that putting too fine a point on? It? <laughs> we talked about that last week. Yeah, there, there's some a little bit of psychotics in there, and CEOs, right? They go and look at CEOs, and they've done this on numerous occasions where it's not so much narcissism because you're going to get some of that. And by the way, anybody who's in politics has a bit of narcissism and ego. Anybody who does certain things, especially high profile things, has some narcissism and ego. You know that. But when they looked at CEOs, they say, yeah, a lot of them have somewhat of a psychotic behavior. Like a lot of like, you know, the difference is, is they put everything into business and success as opposed to serial killing. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter question of the day. Should the citizenship question be on the census? What do you say? Should it? I think it should be on the census. I've got no problem with it. I absolutely should. The Democrats obviously have a problem with it. They're saying it's racist. It's all of these things. But I think it's a good question to be on there. I'm sick and tired of like, well, we shouldn't do this. Or it's voter ID is, is, is you know, is suppression of vote. All of these things. My God, you have to show your ID to get NyQuil. But you don't have to show your ID to get to, to vote. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It really, really is. So I think the citizenship question absolutely should be on there. What say you? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. A smile, baby, is vitally important. Candid has changed the way that they're going to fix your smile that isn't worth a million bucks to a million bucks. They are. As you get older, your teeth will move. Right? They're not as bright as they used to be. And you're saying to yourself, eh, I don't want to get braces, but I want to get my teeth fixed. This is where candy comes in. They've got orthodontists who are licensed in your state. They're going to create a treatment plan for you. Then they're going to send you a 3D preview of what the final results are like. And you're going to be like, whoa. How would you like six months from now to have a brighter, straighter smile? Worth a million bucks. That's what Candid's going to do for you. And it's not going to cost you a million bucks. In fact, Candid's 65% less than braces. So you're going to save thousands of dollars. Have straighter, brighter teeth in less than six months. They're going to put together a plan. They're going to ship out your 3D preview. You're going to go, I like that. Then, boom, they're going to create custom clear aligners, and you're never going to have to go to an orthodontist office ever. Right now, for my listeners, check it out. Go to CandidCo.com slash Benson to learn more. You're also going to save $75 off. That's CandidCo.com slash Benson. CandidCo.com slash Benson. It's the Chad Benson Show. need to fear we promise we won't give you a noogie and make you cry russia 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 who is the fearless leader boy 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 and double boy boy it's your language it is a family show remember who is the family too nostrovia this is chad benson as we walked into the oval office president trump had already tweeted about new polls showing him behind the democrats clearly not happy why does it bother you so much uh because it's untrue 
I like the truth. You know, I'm actually a very honest guy. If I thought they were correct, I wouldn't be complaining at all. I understand that. It's like the witch hunt. Ah, oh. Trump. You know, for somebody who's not transparent and who hates the media, he gives the media a lot of time. He does. He's got a big thing with George Stephanopoulos. Little things are going to be trickling out through the evening. And, uh, you know, from fake news to uh, the FBI. Let's put yourself in a position. You're a congressman. Somebody comes up and says, hey, I have information on your opponent. Do you call the FBI? I don't it's think coming from I'll Russia, tell you what, you do. I've seen a lot of things over my life. I don't think in my whole life I've ever called the FBI. In my whole life. I never called the FBI. <sighs> never in that position. I would if I saw something untoward that needed the FBI's attention. I don't even know what their number is. I know 911 will get me, but I don't know the FBI. Was, is, there, is there a special FBI one? Oh, He also apparently went on to say, yeah, he, he would listen if somebody, somebody foreign offered him something. Who wouldn't? I tell you guys this, and I mean this. Hillary Clinton would trade it all to be in Trump's shoes. If Russia came to her and said, man, we got so much crap on Trump, you're going to lay him away. She has taken it all. Yeah, she would have. Now, there ended up being nothing. But still, you're going to listen, aren't you? Kind of? I'm just saying. Doesn't make it right. Don't get me wrong. Doesn't make it right. And you should call the FBI. <laughs> like, I may go, what do you got? Oh, my God, I better call the FBI. Hey, they gave us all this stuff, but I'm going to look at it all. That's not very nice. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson. Sure is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. The funnest states in the country and the least funnest. Arkansas, Vermont, Rhode Island, Delaware, Mississippi, West Virginia. You are no fun. Oh. Arizona, where I live, we're 14. Not bad. The top five with a bullet. Colorado. Washington, New York City, Florida, and California. California ranks sixth in nightlife, number one in entertainment and recreation. That's that's pretty good. A lot of stuff to do in California. Just not many people can afford to do anything. But there's a lot of stuff to do. You go watch people going into things that you can't do. You can do that. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. What's your take on the census? Should there be a citizenship question? Are you cool with that? Tweet at me at Chad Benson Show. Text the program three two three five three eight Chad. Check out the Instagram as well. It is the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. This is a constitutionally mandated operation that we are required to implement every 10 years. It is one of the most vital and sensitive things that we do in our government. Any change to the census, any addition of a question, usually takes five years of a process to make sure that it is vetted, that every word has been tested, to make sure that it is effective, because it is one of the most important things that we do. AOC today uh, talking about the census question of citizenship. Should it be there? Should it not be there? Should it be there? Should it not be there? Is it racist? Right? Is that what it is? Because that's what you're going to hear is how evil it is and how bad it is. Why it takes five years to go, are you a citizen or not? To add, We need to really, we should. But it's government. Government, everything takes forever in government. It has to be seen in a context. The context of an anti-immigrant policy coming out of this White House. And it's designed 
to intimidate and instill fear. Are you a citizen? No. Are you scared? No. Well, it, you would be, Chad, if you lived in those communities. That's what you're going to hear all the time. I think we have a right to know who's in our country. I think we have a right to know the real numbers. Again, the numbers, by the time the citizens comes out, things will have changed. People have died. New people will come. Some people have left. More births. Those things will change. This is not a, a an exact science. But a roundabout way, we should know who's here and who's not. And the reason this is important is the census. Think about this. The money federally that you get is based on, in many ways, population. Oh. Both the states and municipalities. On top of that, your representation in D.C. How many senators you have yet yeah, those things matter so it is something to absolutely think about should and and right now it's based on the amount of people not whether or not they're here legally or not and the democrats are going to come out and say well you know you want this because if california has 38 million people and you find out that only 30 million of them are are citizens or residents, you're going to take away federal money and it's going to hurt the the blue and it's not going to hurt the red. I mean, that's the whole, you know, what they're going to say. And then then you're going to demonize people and it makes it racist because everything, it's so easy to go, it's racism, it's Islamophobia, it's sexism, it's an ism, it's a phobia. Because that shuts up the conversation. Because, you know, even if you're, Trying to have a conversation and debate, they once they accuse you of that, the debate ends, the conversation ends, because you know you're not going to be able to have a reasonable conversation with somebody. You're not. Go ask any person anywhere across this country, walking down the street, walk up to them and say, hey, do you think on the census we should ask how many citizens are in the country or ask, are you a citizen? Every single person you will encounter will say, well, yeah, of course we should ask that. Yeah. I have no problem with that. By the way, it was at one time a question. Right? So there's a lot of reasons why we do this. But the thing is, why we do something that's rational and real And why we fight against doing something, in many ways, goes down to politics. Politics, politics, politics. Great article in the New York Times yesterday. I didn't have a chance to get to it, but I want want to touch on this. We are so divided as a country. Now, get ready for this. This is insane. This is crazy. 49 states, 49 states are one-party rule. Only Minnesota is split 49 states now some of those states are literally like california is is, is a one-party rule new york you, you don't the it, democrats rule period case close end of story that's it like they rule completely and there's a few republican states that are are similar to that where they've got a super majority, they don't have to worry about anything. Anything they want to do, they will do. That's how divided we are. Think about that. It's just 49 states out of the 50 states. 49 of them are one party rule. Coastal, Democrats, central part of America, into the south. Republicans. Only Minnesota. That is the division we have in this country right now. That's why things like the census, that's why you see this battle right now with the Electoral College going on, because it is not just about what happens in your state. There's so much more. And the way that this plays out is also very interesting. Because why you're like, well, you know, what does this have to do with anything? Well, when you see Alabama go and do what they're doing with with abortion in Missouri, then you'll see states like California say, well, we don't want to work with you anymore. We won't send our people there anymore because the trans bathrooms or whatever. And we're going to pass 
less restrictive laws. We're going to make it more open to do some of these things. So you have a battle of the states, which and, and I've said it all along. We're, we're, we're becoming with a culture fight in this country is massive. It is it is. It, and, and we have two Americas in a lot of ways. We have the central part of the country, the flyover states down into the south. And you have the northeastern part of the country. And then you have the West Coast. And there is a battle going on right now of where this country is headed. That's why things like courts are so important. That's why you see states' rights becoming more and more important. And what, 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 the, what the left wants to do is what they would like to see is more federal government running stuff and as the head of everything, right? And what, what, what the Republican states tend to do is they want to have states' rights. The left would like to say the federal government runs everything, and if we get it in our way, we can force all of these other states to do things. And it's, it's frustrating. It is. You can grow up in a place like, for me, I grew up in, in California. And growing up in California, I always knew we were left-leaning, not to the extent we are now. Not to the extent, you know, I mean, we had Republican governors. We had a few, we had enough Republicans, usually throughout the state Senate, to hold Hold, you know, the other side in check, if you will. And not anymore. Now it's just insane. And Texas is, is the same way. Where it used to be. Biden right now, by the way, according to a new poll, is actually beating Trump in Texas. And you saw how close that Beto got, right? I can guarantee you there's not... <laughs> No Republican is ever going to come close to taking out the likes of Feinstein or Nancy Pelosi. No Republican. Hell, progressive Democrats couldn't take them out. But that's how divided we are. 49 of the 50 states. God. One party rule. And that's why the battle for states, states' rights and where people are going to be moving is so important. And you're going to find this more in the tribal world that we live in because we're going to want to flock together. We're going to get sick and tired of overregulation, overtaxation, or no diversity, or no rights, or no abortion. So you're going to tend to head to the places that you think are going to give you the things you want. And those states, are, that's why autonomy of states is so vitally important. And that's why the Electoral College is so important. Because... If you were to have it right now the way that the Democrats would like it, those red states would be useless. You wouldn't, wouldn't even matter anymore. You, you, you would see, you'd be like California. You would cease to be, if you're a Republican there, or if you have any conservative or even libertarian ideas, you would cease to be anything. The coast would dominate all. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. We're talking about the women's U.S. national team uh, and their victory and whether or not it was the way they went about their victory. They won 13 nothing yesterday. I, I got a lot of blowback because I said I did not think it was a good showcase for women in sports. Right. I didn't think it was. I think the way that the women went about destroying the, the girls from Thailand uh, was wrong and the way they celebrated. Right. Like your coach. Should have said, all right, let's let's you, you know, you, you, you can have an effort, but girls, here's the deal. Keep the ball, knock it around. Right. Let's we could take our foot off. Well, what about this, that and the other? It was the way they celebrate as well. They score. You're up 12 nothing and then you score a 13th goal and you celebrate like you just scored the first goal against your biggest rival. Um, you know, I did turn, I think at about seven, I said to my producer, Jim Watalka, this is going to get ugly really fast. Um, and I feel bad for Thailand, but I, you know, I don't, I, I had a problem with how much they were celebrating it a little bit in the end. Yes. It's like, all right, ladies, it's 13, like settle down, right? It's 13. You're good. Yeah. It's 13. You're good. 13. You're good. Alex Morgan has scored five goals yesterday. When she scored her fifth, she was counting them on her hand as she's like, one, two, three, four. Yeah, no, no. You just, uh, it was, uh, to me, I just thought it was, that was a little low class. I don't think it was bullying. 
I blame FIFA for putting teams out there that can't compete. I would have made the tournament smaller. People want to see the best. They don't want to see blowouts. I understand it's a money thing. But if you're a little girl in, in Taiwan and you're looking at sports and the things that you might want to do, and maybe you like soccer but you see your team getting blown out, you think to yourself, I either got to move to America or choose a different sport. Very few people are going to go, I'm going to change all of that. That was that was not good. It wasn't. And the gap in women's sports is so tremendous when it comes to team sports. When it comes to team sports, it's huge. Individual sports, that's why tennis is one of those things where men can watch tennis, women's tennis, and, yeah, we could say all the stuff, oh, they're sexy in this down there. Yeah, that's all true. But the reality is, is, uh, oh, that's sexy. Shut up. It's true. And they sell their sexiness, so shut up. But the reality is, is, is on a one-to-one level, you see the equality. But when you get to a team level is where it falls apart. Like, look at women's college basketball. Look at a lot of those things. You have concentrated talent in certain areas and 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 also money we, we put tons of money into it and we promote women playing sports here and the european nations have gotten on board the last two decades but yeah i don't think it was i, I just thought the way that they handled themselves was 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 low class in the celebrations but i blame the 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 ruling body for that i don't think it was bullying Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. You could tweet at us. They ask burglars, not the hamburglar, who by the way would also be a burglar, but he only steals hamburgers. They ask them, Hey, how do you choose a house? You know, we case it, we do this and now they go, oh, we knock on the door. If somebody's home, we bounce. It's pretty simple. But what if you're not home but you kinda want to be home? That's where Blink comes in. Blink X T two cameras. They detect motion, so when someone gets near your cameras, you get an alert on your Blink smartphone app, right? You get a video clip, and there's a two-way talk feature. So a majority of the time, like 99.9% of the time, you think to yourself, it's the kids, it's the person delivering a package, whatever it is. You can tell them, leave that there, kids go around the back, however you're going to do it. But sometimes it is that nefarious character, and you want to say, you better get away from my door because I'm calling the police right now. And they go, whoop, because they want path of least resistance. It is incredible. Blink's amazing. Your Father's Day. This is what the fathers, fathers, you guys out there, you want something to protect the home? This is what it's about. You want something that's going to protect the house. You want something that's gadgety, easy to set up, wire free. This is what it's all about. Get your Blink cameras right now. They've made they've made this entire process of home security so easy. No contracts, no subscriptions, totally affordable. Go to blinkprotect.com slash Benson, blinkprotect.com slash Benson, blinkprotect.com slash Benson. Blink, those cameras are available at Amazon and Best Buy. Blink's an Amazon company, and it works with Alexa. That's the Chad Benson Show. Let the Washington Beltway strangle you. This is where the exhausted majority comes to refuel, realign, and reevaluate. This is Chad Benson. Rihanna finding love, or at least like, from President Trump. This week, writer Heaven Nagatu tweeted out a quote from an interview with Rihanna in which the singer and fashion mogul talks about having the proper balance between work and life. You need to make time for yourself, Rihanna says, and make little things a big deal, like going for a walk or to the grocery store. Apparently, President Trump agrees because his official Twitter account liked the tweeted quote. And it's not like the president just hands out likes willy-nilly. There's only a handful on record and hasn't been one in two years. Some are wondering if it was the work of a staffer or maybe President Trump just stands Riri. I like, I think he likes Riri. This is the thing about President Trump, right? I'm going to say this. <laughs> I don't, when it comes to tweets and Twitter, nobody touches his tweets. Like, right? Nobody touches my tweets. Twitter. You don't give out likes unless I say you give out likes. I wonder how she feels. I hate you, Trump. That's what you'll get. I hate you. But it's kind of funny, though. Little Riri. Who don't love Riri? Who don't love Riri? So should you lie to your kids? Well, of course, right? Like That's what your childhood is about. Keeping your child from killing themselves on accident and then lying to them about all kinds of things that you know are good for them, even though they don't know it's good for them. The commercials make it sound like lying to your kids is fun. The internet lady turns off the internet at 6 p.m. But has it really come to this? Introducing Kraft 
salad frosting. Yes, yes it has. Ingredients, Kraft Ranch dressing and deception. Is it frosting? No. Is it wrong? It's not important, but it will get your kids to eat their salad and veggies. Good luck with that. We want to be there when your daughter takes her first bite of salad frosting and never eats a vegetable again. Kids, look, frosting for salad. But how many times have you been lied to by your parents as a kid growing up? Don't sit too close to the TV. You'll go blind. Don't do that or you'll go blind. (laughs) Right? Eat your vegetables. It's good for your eyesight. A lot of stuff about going blind. Don't swim immediately after eating for 30 minutes. You find out it's all, a lot. So much of that stuff was crap. We've just got a more sophisticated way of lying to people now, especially kids. 323 538 2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It's the Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. When you have a census and you're not allowed to talk about whether or not somebody's a citizen or not. That doesn't sound so good to me. Can you imagine you send out a census and you're not allowed to say whether or not a person's an American citizen? Mm, that is silly, right? Like, can we. What is it with this country? Oh, it's politics. That's just it. It's politics. The Democrats and Republicans see things in a much different way. That's always been. We just talked about the fact that we've never been more divided potentially in our country than we are right now as far as our tribalism, especially as when we, uh, when you look at states, right? Like we have 49 states that are basically one-party rule and one state, Minnesota, that's split. So depending where you are in the country, you know who rules it. Democrats, Republicans. If you're in Minnesota, you're like, eh, split. But... Why is it bad to ask the question, are you a citizen? Because it's racist. No, we're trying to get a real count, right? We're trying to get a real count, find out how many people were here. Trying to get a real count. We want to know how many people are here, how many of them are citizens. It shows you that we got an issue in this country. We do. And it shouldn't be that we shouldn't be having this conversation. But every time that you talk about stuff like this, everybody jumps up on the left and screams, you're racist, you're racist, you're No, no, no. It's not you're racist. I think we have a right to know. And I think also everybody should want to know how many people are here. As residents, legally, how many of them are here as citizens, born and raised, been naturalized, and how many of them are here illegally? Well, then we're going to throw them all out. No, I just look. Obviously, that ship has literally sailed. We're that that's not happening. I think we know that, right? But I'd like to know a realish number, wouldn't you? What if it is only eight million? What if it's thirty-five million? Ooh. You can talk. It doesn't matter. Republicans, Democrats, independent. You go talk. The only people who don't want to ask the question. Democrats around the country do. Republicans around the country do. Independents around the country do. The only ones who don't want to ask the question. Democrats in Washington. That's the only ones. Everyone else knows it needs to be asked. Yeah. Everyone. I think it's I think it's fair. But they'll tell you it's racism. It's this. It's that. It's not. It's just, it's just common sense. We used to have it on there. We used to have it on, but we don't anymore. Because it's not right. Right? It's not, yesterday, and it's so funny, this is one of those things where when you heard Bill Maher talk yesterday about how progressivism is essentially, you know, it's a cancer in the Democratic Party, 
and and this the crazy politically correct kind of like you can't even ask now that's a cool accent where you're from people somebody takes it oh my god that's offensive we've turned everything into such ridiculous sense we've thrown common sense so far out the window that getting it back may be tough what do you think you for the census question do you think it's racist do you think it's evil Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Love to hear from you. Yesterday, John Stewart gave an impassioned speech about the nine eleven survivors fund, and today, Mitch McConnell is talking about it. I am imploring. I am pleading. I am begging, Leader McConnell, to give us a commitment today that as soon as the House passes this bill. He'll put it on the floor of the Senate as a standalone bill. We'll see. Uh, I spoke to Congressman uh, David Schweiker yesterday, Arizona's congressman, and and uh, and I I said, you know, it was embarrassing. There wasn't anybody there, and he says, Chad, let me tell you something. And I and I said we can't expect them to be at everything. And producer Phil jokes that during the break, it's, it's like Coachella. Right? You're not going to see every band. Right. Doesn't mean you don't know they're there. Doesn't mean you may not like them or find out. about. But you're not going to see everything. He says everywhere you go here, there's TVs. The floor is being played everywhere. You go to the bat. It doesn't matter where you go. There is. And some of these hearings go on for hours and you're not always involved in in some of the hearings because you're not on any of the committees or this that, and the other. So so and even if you are, sometimes you don't have six, six hours. You've got other places. You've got three or four other meetings you have to go to. Doesn't mean people don't know. He goes, but I will admit the optics weren't great. I said, no, they weren't. But I think we also, you know, yesterday, again, we paid attention to it because of John Stewart. And I think it's a it's an important thing to pay attention to. But I also think it's like it shows you the crazy politicalness of it. Because now you got Schumer out there talking about it today. But it's only because John said if if John Stewart wasn't there yesterday, I guarantee you. It wouldn't have got that much press, and John uh, and John Stewart being there has forced somebody like Chuck Schumer and some others to come out and say, "Oh my God, there's so many, there, there's debates going on right now." I mean, go look at C-SPAN if you ever want to ju- just check things out. Go look at C-SPAN, and you'll see people who are giving speeches, sometimes in passionate speeches, to other Congress people in the House, and you know who's there? Nobody. So it's not just these hearings. There's a lot of times they don't show up. What matters is the vote, but you also need to find the information. And he said something very interesting. He goes, you know, you ask anybody, right or left, they'll tell you, you can't also see everything. That's why you have your your aides and your and your assistants who will monitor, and you'll say, I want to report on this. Check it out. And I get that. I get that. Although optics yesterday were not good, and they were even brought into a bigger spotlight because of the spotlight and who was there. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Shows, your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Diversity in the workplace, obviously, it's the most important thing, right? Like, that is the most important things. Do you have a bias? Don't you have a bias? It's called called unconscious bias and it's a problem even in workplaces that are committed to diversity. We all come to work and to life with biases that embedded us from the day we're born and we learn them over time. PWC CEO Tim Ryan with CEO Action for Diversity and Inclusion. The more we understand implicit biases that we have, then we can be more mindful of our behaviors and then we can be more inclusive people in the workplace. Ryan says the group's 650 CEOs are trained to recognize unconscious bias and are making that training available to their more than 15 million employees yeah i look uh, to me here's my thing on diversity right and and diversity for diversity's sake and forcing it is is silly right being organic is the most important thing being organic is because it's real right and you get a lot of this where, and, and the, like the CEOs, a perfect example is right now there's like 180 or 200 CEOs have signed this thing about abortion and how important abortion is to capitalism or something like that. And, and you just sit back and you're like, oh my God. It's, 
some of it is is about the optics of it all, and we talk about optics a lot because optics are so vitally important. And the optics of it in is you want to be inclusive, you want to be all of these things. When the reality is, is you should just want to f- hire the best people. I don't care if the best people are 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 trans people of color. If that's the best people, then that's who should you want to hire. Is it always that way? No. Are all biases evil and bad? No. All of us have some sort of bias in our life, and very rarely does it have anything to do with with color or this and the other. You have a bias against maybe you, you don't like tall women. Maybe you like short women. Maybe you like uh, guys who are you know have no hair. Yeah, we all have some sort of little biases and things we like. But th- a lot of what you see nowadays in the diversity world is also you know it is it is virtue signaling and it's fear. I mean, you have 180 or 200 CEOs signing something about how important that abortion is to to you know to places like uh you know uh to businesses and you're like well why well a lot of them will probably if if they were honest they would tell you because we're not honest right we're not we 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 keep our mouth shut because we look around the room and we gauge it and we say well i couldn't tell you how i really feel Because then I would be in serious trouble. So we're not honest. But it's the virtue signaling. Even though it's not what's probably, you know, what you really think about. It's virtue signal. Like Utah, nobody wants, Utah, nobody's going to do business in Utah. They got a pretty, you know, when you look at them and and choice and the whole nine yards, nobody's going to do business in there. And taxes, things like this. Come on, that's silly. But I understand why people do it. And CEOs tell you all the time that the thing that scares them in so many ways isn't the downtimes, isn't a bit of a recession, isn't even if they miss the mark, minus Boeing, when it comes to a product or two, it is what social media potentially could do to you and how it could hurt you. 323-538-2423, 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show. Is your Twitter, you could tweet at us, by the way, the funnest states, the, 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 the states where you can have the most fun. They got a new ranking, Wallet Hub does. Let's start at the bottom. We'll give you the bottom five, starting at uh, 45. Arkansas, what? Vermont, what? Rhode Island, what? Delaware, Mississippi, and at the absolute bottom, the bottom. West Virginia. West Virginia. Top five looks like this. Colorado, Washington, New York, Florida, and California. California ranks number one for entertainment recreation, six for nightlife. Nevada's number one in nightlife. Number one. Per capita restaurants, California, New York, Florida, Texas, all tied. Most theaters, California again. Golf courses, Michigan was, oddly enough, number one. Performing arts centers, New York, California. Most fitness, <laughs> fitness is fun. California again leads. Most ski facilities, though, was Vermont. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from everybody. Uh... Wounded Paw. I've been ta- talking about them for a couple weeks, and I've gotten several of you who've said, hey, you know, I'd like to know more about them. Uh, it's incredible what they do. What they do is they go in and they rescue animals that would otherwise be put to sleep. So they see dogs that are getting ready to put to sleep. They go to kill facilities because they recognize there's a problem out there. Too many animals, and many of them good, who are getting put down, and too many vets struggling, 20 vets a day, commit suicide what they do is they train these dogs to become service dogs then they pair them up with a veteran of first responders and their families it's incredible it really is the way they transform these dogs from shelter dogs to service dogs they need your help though they need your car your truck your rv even your boat you got an extra one of those thinking about selling it you don't use it in storage it's just taking up space and you don't even know what to do with it hey donate it get a tax deductible gift and help 
Save a paw and save a life. It is that simple. Go to woundedpaw.org. That's woundedpaw.org. Or call 844-678-4PAW. That's 844-678-4729. 844-678-4729 or woundedpaw.org. And they also take cash. I'm just saying. It's the Chad Benson Show. Feel free to punk this punk rocker any time of the day or night. Reach Chad on Twitter at Chad Benson Show and on Instagram at Chad Benson Show. And oh yeah, the Chad Benson Show on Facebook too. Punk that. Nerves are nerves. Everybody's got nerves. And like I said before, it's it's okay to be nervous. It means you care and, and you want to be successful and do well. Um, once you get on the ice and you have a shift or two, the nerves are going away and it's just playing hockey then. And, you know, the team that executes the best and, and does their job is probably going to win the game. That's Craig Berube, who is the coach of the St. Louis Blues, who take on the Boston Bruins. Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals is tonight. Producer Phil, you, like me, enjoy hockey. There is very few things that are as good. I don't care what sport it is. It's a Game 7. But when it comes to hockey... It outdoes everything, and tonight is it. Game 7, they're just the most amazing things. I agree. It's going to be awesome. Game 7 tonight, St. Louis, Boston. It's been some controversial calls. St. Louis, they've rallied. St. Louis is a baseball town, first and foremost, right? Even when the Rams were there, it was like, hey, you won, great, fantastic. The, The Cardinals rule that town. But they have turned it into the Blues town over the last couple months It'll be fun tonight. Game sevens are amazing. You lay it all on the line. You go out there. You don't leave anything. This is it, man. You're going to lose your teeth. You lose. You just leave it all out there. Leave it all out there. In Boston, eh, they're rocking and rolling, right? They thought they, you know, they were going to St. Louis down a game. They won it, crushed St. Louis. Now they're coming home, and they're playing a game seven. It's going to be interesting. Going to be interesting. It's always fun to watch. If you've never watched hockey. Watching it tonight, you're going to have just a new appreciation, and the intensity is insane. Canada is taking steps on two environmental issues. It will ban single-use plastic items as soon as 2021 to counter pollution and waste. An exact list has not yet been released, but the ban is likely to include bags, straws, and fast food containers. So Canada's getting rid of a bunch of things, plastic-wise. But wait, kids, they've also done something else. Canada will also ban facilities from keeping whales, dolphins, or porpoises in captivity. Marine land in Niagara Falls is the zoo that will be most affected. It has dozens of whales and dolphins. Mm. Parks that presently have the sea creatures can keep them, but the new law also bans making them perform. I think that that is great. Canada is doing that. Hashtag free willy. Hashtag free willy. Do we need them anymore? Do we need the whales? Uh, I think if they're born in captivity, releasing them would be certain death. So I don't, I don't, I don't know if we need that. Uh, obviously, we don't catch them anymore. Do you still have them reproduce? Mm, it's a question, I guess, that, 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 that you have. The performance side of things, because I go to SeaWorld probably one time a month with Jack. And uh, uh, I, I like it. You know, I, I care about these animals. I do. Uh, it's it, it's a tough question, right? It is a very tough question. It's not as easy as blackfish would make it out to be. And we care about these animals because we're able to get close to these animals and see these animals in ways that 99% of us never would. So there is that. So it's, it's a what-do-you-do scenario. They're able to keep their animals now but they're not able to have them perform only dolphins perform now the the killer whales you know and at sea world don't do anything anymore they just swim around so it's a very interesting thing uh to talk about a good debate zoos and things like that because there's a, you know conservation and education is vitally important and if you take that away you know, it, 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 that's a real question I think people need to have answered. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day. As always, kids, night-night, Jack. 
This is the Chad Benson Show.